<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Wonderland Asylum. We're back today with issue 90 of the Hashet Partworks release of Titanic, the ship, the legend. So, what's in the magazine today? We have an article on Edith Louise Rosenbaum and the ominous premonition. It's quite interesting. It's a picture of the workshop of designer Louis Cherouy and uh, I'm not even pronouncing French words today, sorry. <laughs> uh, another picture there. The races at Longchamp. And uh, there it is, Edith Rosenbaum with her pig shaped music box. Apparently that's quite well known. Not by me! And uh, that takes us on to the instructions. Far smaller box today. So let's see what's inside it. Okay, so what's in today's box? We have an LED strip, complete with another Z cable. We have a bag of AP screws. We have a little piece of decking that's nicely folded again. Not quite as bad as yesterday's, but still a little bit on the folded side. We have a brown envelope. And what's inside it? I believe we do have some windows today. Up oh, little metal brackets. Make sure there's nothing else in there. Nope, nothing else. They are the strengthening brackets for the, the bridge deck section that we attached last time. We have another tiny little piece of deck. And we have some windows. Finally, we have the bulkhead slash wall section. With lots of portholes that need drilling out. Eh, fantastic. And we also have the connectors to attach this to the bridge deck. Now, I hear you say, I'm sure there's something missing. There is indeed, but I didn't fancy me giving you another tutorial on painting. I wasn't sure what time I was going to get round to this today. So I have already taken the liberty of painting the final section of the aft grand staircase. Again, just to pick the stairs out a little bit. It's not an amazing paint job, but it'll look slightly better than it did when it first appeared. So, what's the first thing we need? To, well, the first thing it tells us to do is attach these two brackets, but I'm going to leave them for just now. Hmm... Actually, no, change of plan, I'm not. I thought it told us to do them and then go and do other things, but it doesn't. The first thing I'm going to do is get some PVA glue out, some of my Gorilla Wood glue. A little too much, perchance, but... Uh, oh well. And the other thing I'm going to need is some super glue. You see, the glue I use is this it's a product called Glue It, and it's from the range hardware stores in the UK. Now, normally I do get the bigger vacuum sealed tubes, but I haven't had them for a long time. These are the only ones that they've had recently, so I've been forced to mend and make do, as my my old mum would always say. So again, a little bit of super glue for when it comes time to do the windows. As I say, because this isn't vacuum sealed, it does tend to dry up inside the tube, so they don't last. But... However, the first thing I'm going to do, as usual, is drill out these portholes and the doors. So you can see them there. All you do is line the drill bit up in the middle, and this time I'll try not to stab myself. Just a little hand drill so there's no kind of concussive force of using an electric one. You can see the white plastic starting to coil around it. And there we go. 
it makes a massive difference to the appearance as well as because this area is all going to be backlit it means that you'll get light shining out those portholes as well as through the windows which I think will look rather nice in the completed model again just a little thing but it makes such a big difference there we go so I'll get the other four of these drilled out, I won't make you watch me do it and then I'll be back in just a moment okay so that's those portholes all drilled out now the other thing I'm going to do is before I bring the bridge deck over I'm going to do all the work on this Well, they're calling it a bulkhead, but it's basically the walls. And I think it's for the restaurant. Now, the one thing I really don't like, and it's the same with all the windows, is that they go a slant. If you look, that window is lower down. Then it gets higher and higher. Now, I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be, or everybody else's is the same that I've seen. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm not overly fond of it. But anyway, we'll get started on these windows. You can see them there. So the smallest ones are going here. So we'll start with them. Now again, uh, as an old school Airfix model builder, I have no issue at all with uh, the windows because they fit really well most of the time. They're photo etched, so they look fantastic and they're quite therapeutic to put in. Uh, even on camera. <laughs> it's only if they're in really, really awkward spots with really awkward angles around them that they start to get a bit on the frustrating side. Just thought I'd lost one for a second there, but nope. That is your main risk, is losing one. <laughs> okay. And again, I know I go into this every time, but it's just in case this is your first time watching. What I tend to use to put my glue on is this. It's a small hand drill with a straightened paper clip in the end. And what I'll do is dip it in the super glue and then run it around the edge of where the window is going. Take the window. I normally line it up with the top edge and then drop it in and it goes in just like that. As I say, these windows fit pretty well. It was the same with, with Bismarck. The photo etch fitted the, the holes really, really well so it isn't an issue getting them in. I could imagine if the, the holes were less precise it would be a bit of a pest because it's far more difficult to trim photo etch metal than it is to kind of trim plastic but again the level of detail you get with a photo etch completely surpasses anything that you could ever get using plastic parts and again I don't think they're that bad to work with I think by this stage if you're at this point let's say issue 90 we've only got 50 issues to go if you're at this point in the Hachette Titanic and you're, you don't like doing the windows, I would assume you've probably got some sort of system in place to make it tolerable, because I imagine there's still quite a lot of windows to put in, even at this late stage. Oh, oh I didn't like that, so just take it back out. That one in a wee bit ski whiff. Again, line it up nice and square. Push it in. Perfect. Last one of the small ones. The small ones are always the most challenging ones to get in. There we are. And that's the small windows. Now we'll move on to the three bigger ones in the middle. You can see they're attached on there. And they all look exactly the same. Again take them off the photo etch disc. Now, as I've said, with the, the photo etch you tend to get with, with hash 
products, they're pretty easy to get off. As I say, I've tried to do a Metal Earth kit before and I found the Photo Etch extremely difficult to work with. Uh, even to get off the disc, it was, they're not as thick, so it was bending and oh no. You need a very, very sharp scalpel. And I don't trust myself with sharp objects, so... <laughs> Again, line up one end, drop it into the hole, just like that. And the same with the one on the other side. Because it's straight. Are you allowed to call things straight these days? Mm. That one doesn't want to stay in its hole, I'd far rather stick to my finger, but there we go. That's that one, and that one there has a slight curvature to it. So all I'm going to do is just tease that around the tip of my finger, just to make a slight arch in it. Just like that, so it'll fit the curvature. And if you curve it slightly more than it needs to be, it means you can put it in and push it flat. It's far harder to curve it while it's on, if that makes sense. Again, ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, that was the exact curvature it needed. Awesome. And then finally, we have the four arched windows that go at the end. And that concludes our windows for today. <laughs> I say I don't normally sit and make you watch me do all the windows, but on this occasion I'm going to, just because it's been a little while. <laughs> so I'll turn it round because it makes it easier to put them in. As I say, the flat edge first. Oh, that didn't make it easier at all. Flat edge into the bottom means the curved edge will fit the top perfectly. And then the same there. Again. Yeah, I cannot recommend enough using something like this to apply glue. No matter what kind of kit you're doing, it removes the danger of spraying glue all over your model. Um, as I say, as someone who built numerous Airfix kits as a child, <laughs> um, I wish I'd known about this kind of thing beforehand. It would definitely have, have been helpful. So there we go. And that is the wall with all the windows in. And now what I need is four of the AP screws and we'll get the bracket fitted. Again, using my trusty Universal screwdriver. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a keyhole pattern. They'll only go in one way. And that allows us to secure this down to the bridge deck. Just momentarily. And with every turn of the screwdriver, my wrist is clicking today. That's always fun. Again, we have two more issues of Titanic, and I think that will take us up to Christmas time. And I should get another four issues of the U-Boat to do before Christmas, which I'm quite looking forward to. Because uh, it's certainly more involved than Titanic is, put it that way. Um, if you've seen the videos 
Uh, you'll know what I mean. That one wasn't quite tight enough. That's better. Hmm. Don't know if it's just the way I've screwed that in, but ah. I was trying not to put too much pressure on someone to pop those windows out. Should I actually have done this? Put the brackets on before I started dealing with the windows. I did think about that, but I don't know why I didn't, to be honest. I, th I think it was just because the instructions said to do the windows first, I did. Yeah, but the instructions also said to bring the, the deck over before you started doing all of this, so I can't claim I follow the instructions all that religiously, but there we go. That's that done. Now we need the deck over. <laughs> so I'll go and get the deck and I'll be back in just the tick. Okay, so here we have our bridge deck. And the first thing they want us to do is take the two metal brackets, get a little bit of super glue into this dent and dent here and that little indent there and what that should do is bring the top of the, the deck together a bit more now it also adds to the curvature of the deck which is uh, a bit concerning because when you sit it on the hull as you saw last time it does lift up at one side. Now I'm wondering if the weight, combined weight of the, the boat deck and the prom deck will bring it down a little bit, but hmm, I don't know, because uh, you can't really see it here. Well, you can kind of, but the deck curves in the middle, and the hull doesn't, so <laughs> that's a bit of a concern, for me anyway. Uh, I know a couple of other people have mentioned it too, and the next thing it wants me to do Let's get another two of the AP screws. In fact, I'm not going to do that just now. I'm going to finish putting the decking on first. And then I will come back to the staircase when I go to do the uh, LED strip on the underside. Now, this is the first piece of decking. And again, you know me, so you know what I'm doing now. Get my wood glue. Paint it in the exact same spot as I painted it on last time when I didn't have this section of deck to put on it. Oh well. <laughs> so this is getting a double coat, but one coat's already dry. Don't know if that'll help or hinder or not make the slightest bit of difference at all, to be honest, but I think it will see in a moment. Hopefully, it helps. Nothing worse than when your deck starts to peel. If you can see the bits I attached last time have settled quite nicely. They're not peeling up, which obviously was a big concern of mine. Again, take the backing off the deck. Line it up. The indents and Press it down nice and firmly. Again, use the end of the screwdriver to just push it in along the sides, just so that. Because my fingers, my big sausage fingers, can't get in to push it down quite tightly enough. But that's what that looks like. And then we also have a tiny little section of deck to go in just here. So again, as I said, way too much glue, but hey-ho. Just spread it in here. Take that bit off the wall. We don't need that. And now, this does go in a particular way to line up the planks you already have. 
No, mine doesn't. <laughs> so I'm going to line it up with the sh slightly shorter planks facing towards what's going to be the stern. Some of the other ones I've seen the planks line up really, really nicely. Mine doesn't appear to. That's a shame. I think it's just the luck of the draw, how well the, the planks line up. But... There we go. That's that little bit of decking in place. You won't really see it because it's going to have that deck housing around that that edge. But still, it's always nice to kind of have it line up properly. Now, now what we're doing is we're going to be fitting this bulkhead and it goes just here. And again, make sure all the little tabs line up. Just like that. And it's going to be held in with four of the AP screws. Might as well get the two for the staircase out at the same time. There we go. So six in total. Again, you know, as is always my way, put a bit of pressure from underneath. There's the first screw in. Then the one at the other end. And just make sure all the wee tabs are perfectly in their holes because if they're not, it's not going to screw down properly and you're going to end up stripping the plastic out, which you definitely don't want to do. There we go. And another one just up here. This one could do with an extra little tighten. Perfection. You're not going to see too much of it, but that is what you'll see when you look through the window. Just along there. Not very much, but enough that it gives a bit of depth to the model. And I dare say a little bit of believability as well. So now we're turning the deck upside down. Yeet! And the first thing we're going to do is take the LED board which goes in here, just behind where the staircase is. Going to be in a minute. <laughs> Just making sure of that. Yeah, it goes in exactly behind the last one. So again, I'm going to move this along a little bit, just so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. So it's going in just here. Again, there's a indent there, lines up with the indent here. And I think if you get it under one side, it pops under the other side quite easily on the lower decks. The boat deck absolutely not, but the lower decks yeah, it seems to work not too badly. And then slide it in. Oh, that one isn't quite under, I don't think. No, that's fine. Perfect. There we are. That's the LED strip. And the final thing I need to do attach my lovely painted staircase. So again, you have the two screw holes and the two pins there and they get held in with the final two AP screws. Again, 
a little bit of pressure from the other side. Screw it down. Now the bit that I don't get with this is, there's no deck underneath here, at least not that I'm aware of. So that staircase is kind of leading to nowhere, essentially. Uh, I know the, the aft grand staircase went further down than the forward one did. Uh, but still, hmm. So yeah, that's what that looks like. You've got that lovely flooring, and then the stairs, the marble stairs leading down. There's our bulkhead that we did, and the other pieces of decking. Superb! I think that looks great. Really, really impressed with that, really chuffed. So, that's us for issue 90. What's coming in issue 91? The other side, basically. Uh, the bulkhead, windows, LED strips, vents, connectors and screws. So I don't know what vents there are. Oh, it must be them there. Quite difficult to see. Uh, yeah, basically a mirror image of what we've just done. And what we've just done is this. The staircase and the bulkhead, as I said before, you can kind of see there what you're going to see when you look through. But yeah, I think that's that's looking superb. Again, see what I mean about it being curved? Now I wonder if the weight from the above decks is going to pull it down, but we've fitted these metal brackets to make sure it kind of doesn't warp it. So I'm a bit confused as to how that's going to, how that's going to fit into the hull, because at the moment it doesn't look like it's going to. Um, but we'll see. We'll see once it's all in place, once everything's screwed together. There's no sense worrying about it just now. I just really, really hope Hashi aren't going to turn around and 40 issues, 50 issues time and go, oh yeah, by the way, we messed that up, we're going to have to fix it. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Any feedback, comments, criticisms, compliments, complaints, drop them down below. Do leave me a like because it helps out massively and do subscribe to the channel to see the rest of Titanic as well as the rest of the U96 U-Boat. But again, thanks for watching and as always, guys, peace out.